Hello everyone, this is Adrian Leffler with My Social Practice. I'm real excited to talk about how Facebook is changing uh, the inside scoop on graph search. Uh, for some of you out there, you may have heard of graph search. It just was recently uh, released to the public by Facebook. They had a beta on it for a few months prior to this, but now you, anybody can get it. And it's completely revolutionizing the way that a consumer can find a business within, within Facebook and it's kind of flipped everything on its head from traditional search so I think you're gonna find this very interesting it's directly applicable to you know owning a dental practice and becoming aware within your community or helping your community become aware of your practice and your business so I think you'll find it really helpful this is what we're gonna talk about uh, first of all we're gonna we're gonna talk about how traditional search works because I think it's important to just make sure we understand how that works in contrast to graph search. Then we'll watch a short video on graph search that Facebook did. Then we're going to show you how Facebook graph search works. And then I'm going to show you some pointers on how to optimize for graph search. And then we'll end by talking about some things that you can do today to begin uh, optimizing for graph search and getting your practice ready for it. So first of all, let's talk about traditional search. Traditional search is the type of search that you've been using when you use Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Uh, between those three search engines, they comprise and encompass about 98% of all the search traffic online, which means that anytime a consumer goes online and they're going to go look for a business or try and find some information, they're most often going to Google, Yahoo, and Bing to do those searches. And Google controls about 67% of all the search traffic online. Now, the way that the search algorithm works, and this is very, very basic, uh, we're not going to go into any detail about this, is the query is done through keywords. That's through the search bar. You go to the search bar and you type in uh, dentist in whatever city or something like that. So it's searching from keywords. Google then takes those keywords that you search for and they relate those to your website and what they're looking for is they're looking for the strength of links and content on your website. The stronger your links and your content is, the, the higher you rank in the search engine. And that's a very basic explanation of how it works. So here we are on Google and I'm going to do a search for dentist in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm going to hit enter. Now what happened right there is Google took these keywords, dentist, and this geographical term, Salt Lake City, Utah, and they searched the entire web. And they limited the results down to the best sites relating to those keywords. Now the algorithm continually changes. It's always changing because Google's job is to basically try and figure out how to get the best results for the consumer. If the consumer uses Google to get what they want, then they'll always use Google and then they can sell ad, uh, ad space to businesses. SEO companies, the, the type of SEO companies that you would hire to help uh, optimize your practice is continually trying to figure out what the algorithm is and optimize your site so that you're showing up as the best result. And that's the game. So Google is uh, trying to give the best result for the consumer. The SEO company is trying to, in so many words, game the system and trying to get your website to rank higher than other results in your area for the whatever keywords you're trying to optimize for. So it's all based on the keyword search and the results are populated according to the strength of the links, the number of links and the strength of those links and there's a whole conversation about what that means that we won't even touch right now and the content on your website. Just a quick look here, at the top we have what we call pay-per-click. This is also pay-per-click over here. Everything else on the page is optimized. So these results here, here, and here are organic listings. These are related directly to the strength of the links and the content on those websites. This is the local search section. This is related to your website, but also it's related directly to your Google Plus page and your Google Places page, which are kind of the same thing now. They're, they're trying to merge those. I have a whole other webinar about Google Plus and Google Places if you're interested. Uh, if you scroll down a little further, 
you'll then see that you've got more organic listings. These are all related to the strength of the links and the content with those websites. Okay, so that's the results. That's how you that's how all search traditional search works. Google, Yahoo, and Bing. Now let's talk about Facebook graph search. I'm now on Facebook.com forward slash about forward slash graph search. If you do a search on Google for Facebook graph search, this should be the top result. If you have not come to this page and upgraded, you are probably using the old Facebook search bar. Uh, let me show you how to do this. You would scroll down to the bottom of the page here, and right here at the bottom it says try graph search. And if you hover over it, if you already have graph search on your on your account, it would say thanks, you already have graph search. If you don't have it, you can click that button and it will upgrade your account so that you get graph search. Another way to tell if you have graph search yet or not is just looking at the search bar here. Up at the top, if it's white like this, this means you have graph search. If it's the older, smaller, and I think it was blue, I can't even remember now because it's been a couple months since I've used the old, um, the old search bar, but I believe it was blue. And if it's that, you don't have graph search and you'd want to go upgrade it. Now what I'd like to do is show you how it works. So if you go up here to the search bar, I'm going to search dentist offices in Utah that my friends like. And what we see here are results. And I'll just scroll down so you can see it gives you results for quite a ways. Okay. So Greg Pitts is the top result. And the reason that he's the top result is because I have, if you can see here, Blake Hadley, Rob Jensen, and four other friends like his practice. So the reason why his result ranks highest for me is because I have several friends that have clicked the like button on his page. So the search phrase, dentist offices in Utah that my friends like, is a semantic search. And there are several nodes within that sentence that Facebook is using to determine what the result should be. It's checking dentist offices, Utah, so there's a geographical uh, search. My friends, so people that I'm connected to, but that they have clicked the like button on. So there are four nodes of information that, that Facebook is using. So when we go back to this slide here, Facebook graph search is based on the query, which is a semantic speech query, and the result comes through connections and likes. The semantic speech, I showed you the example of that, but the connection is my friends. I have 550 friends or so on my Facebook page. I'm specifically searching that relationship and the businesses that they have clicked the like button on. All right, let's move on to number four on the, the outline here, how to optimize for graph search. I'm going to use Greg Pitts's Facebook page here because uh, we, we helped set this up. We, we made sure it was set up properly. First and foremost, there's the About section on your Facebook page. If you notice this section right here, this is called the Short About section. It's visible from the front page of your Facebook page, but it pulls all the information from this link here. If you click on the About link, it takes you to a hidden page that has quite a bit of information about this practice. You want to make sure that all of the information in here is correct. Phone, email, websites, a description that you've tagged your, your account for the word dentist or orthodontist or whatever type of a practice that you are. But make sure it's all correct. Back on the front page, it will populate this section here, this short about section. Dentist, address, phone number, and the business hours. Now that information is really important because that's where that semantic speech is pulling that information from. If I search dentist office, it's actually pulling that from this tag right here, dentist. If I say in Utah, it's pulling that from the address here on my Facebook page. The second way that you're going to want to optimize your Facebook page is to optimize it towards the types of connections that patients can have with a dental office. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. We've looked at how traditional search marketing works. If you go to Google, Yahoo, or Bing, you're going to search a keyword phrase. You're going to look for, you know, if you need your wisdom teeth pulled, you're going to search wisdom teeth 
dentist in whatever city you're you're in. That's what you're going to search. You're going to search that keyword phrase because the search algorithm it gives you the best results based on that phrase. Inside Facebook, the graph search tool has absolutely no relationship to a keyword type search. It's all related to connections. And the way that a patient connects with a dental office is there's only a couple ways really that they can do it. And one is to click the like button. Another way is to visit the office. So I'm going to show you right here what I, what I mean by this and it'll help us to understand what types of connections we want to optimize for. So if I search this phrase, dentist offices that my friends and then I stopped, I did not finish the sentence. You can see that the graph search tool here is guessing at how I'm going to finish. And they're guessing at these specific phrases because this is the only way that people can connect to a business anyway inside Facebook. So you see it says dentist offices that my friends visited, work at, or like. I want to specifically focus on this phrase, like and visited, uh, to talk about how to optimize your Facebook page. We all should know what the like button is. It's basically the way that a patient connects with your practice's Facebook page. They click the like button right here on Greg Pitts's page. If I click this like button, then all of my friends know that I like Greg, Greg Pitts. Okay? So in order to optimize for likes, because this is probably going to be the main search function inside Facebook, you've just simply got to get more likes. If you don't have likes, no one's going to be able to find you. Now, 529 likes is pretty darn good for a dental office. I think the average, there was a study done a few months back, and I think the average is just about around 100, or maybe it was less than 100 likes for the average dental practice. You should, you should try and get a third of your patient database to like you on Facebook. That's a good goal to shoot for if you have not begun building a social media campaign. So you got a thousand current active patients. Try and get 333 of those to click the like button on your Facebook page. That's a good goal. Now, how effective is getting more likes? Well, let me do some math. So this is an actual live recording of my cell phone, as you can see here. And I did this because I have a calculator and other than I can't do math in my head. So, Greg Pitts has 529 likes. The last time that I checked, the average Facebook user had 130 friends. So, his reach, now obviously there's going to be some crossover, you know, however much that is, but that's a really big number. 68,770 people is the potential reach that, that uh, Dr. Pitts has through the current likes that he has. So the way that you look at this is every time you get a like, you're potentially reaching 130 other people through that connection. So with that in mind, all you need to do is just get your current patients to like your Facebook page because they're connected to everybody that's a potential opportunity to become a new patient through your current patients. You don't need to go out and buy likes. I know there are ways you can buy lots of likes, but they're just junk. You need to get your current patients to like your Facebook page. So how do you get more likes? I've just skipped over to our Facebook page and notice right here we have a free ebook called Five Easy Ways to Get More Likes on Facebook. And if you go ahead and click on that, it'll take you to this landing page where you can download this book. This has got some real easy ways and some great ideas about how you can start right now to begin generating more likes um, on your Facebook page. And all these are techniques that we've used with, with our current full service clients and they work so go ahead and, and do that if you have any interest in, in building out your Facebook page. If you're interested in becoming a My Social Practice client, we have a comprehensive solution that, that does much more than just help in Facebook. We've got a whole bunch of stuff involved. But Facebook is a big part of how we run and manage a campaign uh, because so many of your patients use it. And we go to the ends of the earth creating ways so that you can get more likes on Facebook so that we can get the end result of creating a wider reach for you and, and hopefully finding new patients and building your brand. Now this video that I'm going to show you is just the first few seconds of a promotion that we offer only to our clients and I just want to give you a, a taste of the, the quality and the ways that we go about creating these campaigns. Here at My Social Practice, we believe the best place to start getting likes on Facebook is not online. 
it's in your practice. And that's why we send you the Like Prize Bag, a fun and easy way to increase your likes and get your patients excited about your Facebook page. As a part of this campaign, you'll receive the following materials. An instruction sheet that recaps everything you'll learn from this video. Two posters to hang on your wall. A goal chart to put in your break room. Eight buttons for your team to wear. And of course, the prize bag. Now let's break each of these items down. So this promotion involves posters with QR codes, which stand for quick response codes like this. It includes applications that build into your, you know, your mobile phone so that people can use their mobile phones to like your practice on Facebook. You can use the prize bag promo also to do a check-in deal. Uh, that can be built into the campaign if you like. We have instructions on how to give away prizes when they reach in the bag and pick out a prize. We've even created a swag store where you can, you can purchase items to put in the bag uh, to make it easy on you. And we do tons of training with this so that we're training your staff on how to use the, the materials in the office to make sure that it works. So that's one idea that we have in the full service solution. We, we're really a creative agency. We have lots and lots of ideas. But uh, this will cut out on a whole lot of time that it would take to, to figure out how to run these campaigns in the most effective way. We really deliver it kind of packaged and ready to go. And I think you'll really be happy with our service if you did want to work with us. All right, now that we've talked about how to optimize for likes on Facebook, Let's go back to Greg Pitts' page in this search that I, they did and talk about how to optimize for my friends that have visited a practice. All right, so I've pulled my iPhone back up, and I'm going to log in to my Facebook app. Anybody that has a smartphone has the ability to download this Facebook app, which allows you to post directly to your Facebook page or get into your Facebook account from your phone. And um, you can notice up here in the top right hand corner it says check in. Well if I click on that what happens is it uses the GPS connection in my phone to locate where I'm at and then it identifies all the businesses that are close to where I'm at and you can see there's quite a few. So if I were to walk into Dr. Pitts's office and open up my Facebook app and click check in Dr. Pitts's office would show up here on this list and then I could click on the name of his practice. Let's just, I'm going to click on Millennial Falls Wedding and Reception Center, which I've actually never been to. But I could say, I love this place. Like that. Even though I've never been there. And I could hit post. Um, and I'll actually just do it because, you know, for the sake of showing you this, but all of my friends are going to possibly see that I've been to this reception center and they'll wonder what I'm doing. But if I go ahead and do that and then I click over to my Facebook page, you can see it just tagged <laughs> I love this place and anyway I'm gonna delete this so it'll come off here. People are gonna be wondering what in the world I'm doing. So it creates the ability for somebody to walk into your office. You can you can reach out to them again, you can say hello, you can um, you know build on your relationship with them, but then if they check in it posts a message to their Facebook page like that so all their friends see it. Well, Facebook track... Oh, and by the way, while I'm here, because I did come to my Facebook page, I just want you to know that uh, these are not all of my children. I don't have seven children, although I do live in Utah. So just want to make that clear. Now, when somebody checks in, it not only posts it to their Facebook page so all their friends see it, but it also tags that person as having visited that particular office so that when we go up here to the search bar and we type in dentist offices that my friends visited and I click on that the search results it shows me all the offices and I didn't do a geographical phrase on this so it's pulling people from all over the country but you get the point it shows us all the dental offices that somebody I'm connected to has actually walked in and checked in at and so if you want to optimize for visited, you have to optimize for these check-ins. Now, optimizing for check-ins can get fun. You can run these really cool promotions. And this is, I'm giving you some examples of what we've done with our full-service clients. Uh, but you're, you're, you know, you could do this on your own if you put together the, the campaign. It's really simple. You would create some imagery and you would create, um, you know, when we do this, we actually have quite a bit of marketing messages like this check-in here that uh, show up all over the place so people are notified about it 
And then the practice also talks about it in the office. But here's one where Life Smiles Dental Care gave away a $5 gift card to Starbucks. Here's one where Stadium Dental Center uh, gave a $10 off of your visit when you checked in. And here's another example. This is Salt Lake Dental Care. They gave a $10 uh, theater card. This is to go see a film, a gift card, to anybody that walked in and checked in. So you can run campaigns like this. A great way to think about check-in deals is you get kind of a triple benefit. The patient not only walks into the office, so you have the opportunity to say hello and shake their hand and whatnot, but they post something to Facebook so all their friends see it, and you're optimizing for the graph search. These check-in deals are real fun to, to run and manage for uh, clients. Thank you for participating. It's great to see how many people sit in on these. Obviously, I'm doing a much better job than I thought I was. <laughs> If you have any other, other questions about what I talked about today or if you're interested in becoming a full-service client, feel free to give us a call at the number right here. We, we'd love to help out, and we wish you the best of luck. Talk to you soon.